Adam, it's nice to talk to you today following a win on Sunday. Uh, it must be nice to be doing interviews this week rather than having to answer questions about losses. Am I right? Uh, yeah, a lot better. What happened on, on um, Sunday? What went right? What, what, we, what do you feel good about? We'll start off with Sam. Without a turnover, I thought that that was a big step. Yeah, it was. I thought he played really well. He did a great job of controlling really the things that he could control. He did a good job of making the right decision when he was in the pocket, you know, whether it be taking a sack, throwing the ball away, just those little tiny things instead of trying to go out there and, and win it by himself. He did a good job of spreading the ball around, doing what he had to do to, to move the ball down the field. Now, is that a conversation you have to have with him? Like, literally, don't try too hard. Don't try to make something happen that's not there. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about that quite a bit, and a lot of it has to do with when he, he feels like he can extend the play, and, and it's it might be just a slight inaccurate throw that can, can cost a turnover for him, you know, kind of like what happened in Jacksonville where I've seen him make that throw, you know, probably 50 times already since I've been here where he's rolling to the left and he just puts it right on the spot and he just left it a little behind the guy. So it's just it's those, those things when we're kind of in a, a little bit of – you know, if things aren't going well, it's just we have to play smart. Adam, what, what came over Jamal Adams? Obviously, he's a very talented player, but he was a beast in that game, especially that strip and the touchdown on, on Daniel Jones. Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard to explain. I feel like I've seen him play like this a lot because that's what you see on Sunday is what you what we get to see every day. Like, that's that's really consistent. I do think there was – it was like he was at a higher level than what I've seen. I, I mean, he just – he looked fast. He was aggressive. I just – I don't know if he just felt really good about our game plan and kind of watching them and seeing what they were doing throughout the game or, you know, his pre, you know, his, you know pregame study. I mean, he just – he looked like he was just playing at a different, different speed than everybody else. All right. He said that he had a conversation – uh, with you and uh, and Joe Douglas, how did that conversation go? Yeah, I mean, I, I said this the other week. I, I think that's getting made to be a little bigger than what it, what it is. I mean, me, we had conversations on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the whole week. You know, I, we, we never really got into that. That was, you know, that wasn't really for me to speak on. I mean, but we, we talk every day. So, I mean, we're around each other so much. I mean, it's hard not to talk to each other. So, Coach, in the middle of the game, there's, well, this has happened now a couple times, but I want to be specific about this week. There ends up being like that 20-minute gap in the second, uh, between the end of the first quarter and the third quarter um, that got broken up with Jabal making that play. But besides that, momentum really seemed to shift for the Giants during that time. What was going on during that period that you think made you guys struggle? No, we, I mean, we missed a couple opportunities. We, we had a shot on the flea flicker, which would have been really nice at the time. To get that, that, I think that really could have helped push us over the edge. And then we had a chance when, you know, we stopped them on fourth and one. You know, we we're right there on the on the cusp of, of field goal range, and you know we don't we don't gain a yard. I mean, or we did gain one yard, but we didn't we didn't do enough. We needed to get a first down there. We needed to get in the red zone and try to give ourselves a chance. We just we just didn't get anything going. And you know that's that's part of kind of the NFL. That's what that's what happens. You have some series like that, and you just got to go back and and regroup and and make sure that when you go out there the next time, you put something together. Adam, I. I I, I was at the game, and I was startled. Let, let's say that Saquon Barkley is healthy, and he claims that he is, and Derek Jeter always used to say, if you're playing, then you're healthy. The fact that you held him to one yard and 13 carries, to me, is extraordinary. Was that the game plan, just to shut down Saquon Barkley and, and have Daniel Jones beat you in the air? Yeah, I mean, the majority of the time we go into games, we're, we're, we're saying stop the run. And, you know, I think our front and... You know, it helps to have the safeties that we have. That those guys contribute quite a bit to it. As far as being able to stop the run, we, you know, I think our one of our concerns going into the game was really him in the passing game. You know, of him getting loose, you know, one on one with anybody. That that was a little, that was probably a, a little bit of a concern. But you know, I thought the guys did a pretty good job of just making sure that we, we kept him in front of us. All right, you you had the Dallas win and then followed it up with three straight losses. So how conscious is it to try to you know bottle this and and find the consistency? Because I think you've proven that on any given Sunday that you can dance with with good football teams. Dallas is a really good football team. But how do you just try to maintain that consistency in Washington and just start to march forward and not take that step back? 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to be about our preparation, just making sure we stay focused on task at hand. Uh, uh, we're not in the position to really look look ahead, look behind. All, all we need to focus on just doing a good job this week, preparing for the game, you know, getting ourselves ready, and then going on the road on Sunday and finding a way to win a game. I mean, that's really got to be our number one priority. It can't be anything else, and it's going to take you know all 46 that are going to be dressing for this game to. To, to be able to do that. A long-time coach's mantra has always been next game. That's what we're worried about. Uh, it's hard to argue with Sam's enthusiasm, but did you cringe as a coach when he said, yeah, we still have a chance at the playoffs. All we have to do is win out. Do you not want your players to think like that, think that far ahead? Yeah, I may or may not have reminded them. Just <laughs> let's focus on... <laughs> Let's focus on one game at a time right now. Now, um, n no one wanted to talk about it before, but you're coming up the Miami loss, Coach, and you're playing the team that you share the stadium with. In retrospect, was that more than just another game for you and for this team and for this fan base? You know, I, I, when coming into it, because, I mean, this is my first experience with it, right. and, you know, when you get in the stadium, you, you, it feels different. It does feel different. You you kind of see the divide in the stadium. You know, I know technically we were the whole team, home team, but I mean, it was it was both sides. I mean, it was it was a good showing on 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 both sides, and it it, it almost felt like a college type atmosphere in the stands where you almost feel like it's at Florida Georgia where it's like divided down the middle almost, and it was. It was a good environment to be to be in when when you're whether you're coaching playing on whatever sideline it's a it's a it's really a cool game to be a part of. You know, back in the day, you know, the Giants would be in Jersey, the Jets would train at Hofstra. So you shared the stadium, you shared kind of the city, but you were just so distant from each other. One's on Long Island, one's in New Jersey. But now you're you're literally what, like thirty, thirty five minutes away. Do you interact dinner interact at all, whether it's charities or just running into each other, different things with the Giants? Well, I know I know a bunch of guys kind of live close to each other, or some of the guys live in the same towns. But mm -hmm. I, my, me personally, I haven't I haven't really run into into anybody. So, but I guess there there are a lot of guys that that do they do run into into guys on the on the Giants. I'm always curious, Coach. What is said? I, sometimes I wonder if anything's said at all when the two coaches shake hands in midfield after the game. Uh, beleaguered coach on the Giants side and, and Pat Shermer, six straight losses. What do you say to them? What do you guys say to each other when you shake hands? I don't even I don't even remember what either one of us said. Right. I mean, sometimes some 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 interactions are different than other others. I mean, obviously, I've known Pat for a long time. I mean, we were we were on the same staff a, a long time ago at Michigan State. So, I mean, we've known each other. I I mean, at that that point, it's really you don't want to say anything. Right. When you're the winning coach, and you know. A losing coach, you don't want to say anything. So, I mean, it's just kind of like shake hands, and, and that's about it. See, I always wondered why even shake the hands. Just go right into your, into your locker room. Who cares? I mean, it's all an act anyway. I mean, the guy who lost is ticked off. The guy who wins wants to gloat. Nothing good can come of it. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's just what it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, uh, you're you the type of guy, it seems like you don't let outside noise permeate. But there was outside noise this week after losing to the Dolphins. Was it important to get this win to shut down the outside noise? Because even if you don't hear it, your players hear it, families hear it, ownership hears it. Is it is it good to shut it down for one week? I think it was important just because, I mean, I don't know about everybody else. I was sick of losing. Mm -hmm. I mean... Everybody in this building wants to win. I mean, you don't want to lose. It's 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 the worst feeling to go through for for that week, and you can't wait to get to the next game and just try to try to get that taste out of your mouth. And you know, when we've lost that this many games, it's 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 it, you get you get you get pissed, and you want to go out there, and you want to fix it, you want to right the ships. And, and I think our guys did a good job of focusing last week, and they did everything they could in practice to make sure that you know we were ready to go on Sunday and. And it was great, great energy we, our players had. It didn't matter what the score was. They kept focus on task at hand. And, you know, when we were down, they, they figured out a way to dig out of it and, and get the lead and win the game. What challenges do the Redskins present? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for us, it's, we're going to have to do a good job against, you know, in the run game and make sure that we don't let their receivers have any explosive plays. I mean, that's, that's always going to. 
that seems to be the challenge for us really most weeks that we're dealing with, especially of, of late. And defensively, they have a lot of really good players, and we're going to be, we're gonna have to do a really good job protecting the football, and, and we need to do a better job in the run game. We've got to find a way to run the ball and be more effective there. We've we got to kind of get out of this, this rut of, you know, 2-9 a carry, and we need to be more efficient, and we need to find some ways to get some explosive plays. And and finally, I mean, have you ever seen a guy have a more hard luck season than Chris Herndon? Yeah, that's that's a tough one for him to go through with, you know, being suspended and then finally getting getting ready to come back and then you have the hamstring and then the, basically the first play that you're in for, you, you know, you do that. It's just it's unfortunate, you know. I'm, I know that he's he's it's it, he's taking it tough. You know, I, I I know that he he we looked at him as to be a valuable piece of what we were trying to do this year, and really to only get one game out of him, it's just you know we all feel bad for him because he's put in so much work to try to get ready, for, you know, once he was able to go out there. Adam, congratulations on the win. Good luck in D.C. and we thank you for joining us as always. All right, thanks guys. All right, that's.